morning everyone today we are going to start the topic structural approach in pedagogy of a school subject english so let's see students what is structural approach and how it is, it is working in english teaching so let's see it now from this class you will be actually able to comprehend the concept and characteristics and types of structural approach in english language teaching and you will be well versed I, this is my objective of today's class that you must know about uh, structural approach what it is and its introduction then principles everything you will be knowing in detail and i suppose students that you will be studying properly and you will be learning that now let's discuss about structural approach what it is and how it is seen in english teaching students i have already taught you about situational approach also so this is also popularly known as structural oral situational approach and it came into being as an alternative to the uh, alternative to the direct method of teaching english and based on the assumption that language can be learned through a scientific selection and grading of structure that means if we want to um, if want to teach our students then we have to make some scientific structures we have to make some uh, good structure for the students so that our students are learning more effectively okay so this is uh, actually a scientific selection and grading of structures and then patterns of sentences and vocabulary is very much unique for the student and now it is in the words of menon and patel that the structural approach is based on the belief that in the learning of the language mastery of structure is important than the acquisition of vocabulary so all of you know that when we are learning about foreign language or uh, the vocabulary or the english is a foreign language in indian classroom so we know it that uh, when we are learning it we have to be very particular with the structures many students know the vocabulary they know its meaning but they don't know how to use it in a proper structure and that is the only reason that people are not actually and students are not comfortable in speaking uh, speaking the language wherever it is required so uses uh, techniques of direct method but the use of translation is not fully rejected uh, we have already discussed about direct method and we have seen that in direct method we rejected the translation process and we were actually stick to english language only and whatever the concepts whatever the device prose poetry grammar composition we are teaching to our students they were entirely on the uh, english language only but here in structural approach it is not like this some some their translation is not fully rejected wherever it is required it is used also so now understand it in a very comfortable thing that this is a scientific selection and grading of structures there are number of structures in in, in language and those structures uh, have to be learned in a very scientific way and then we have to frame a pattern and sentence of vocabulary which is actually required from the students we know the vocabulary there are uh, so many um, words in our uh, mind and we are not using them so that is called passive vocabulary and that passive vocabulary also becomes active when we are using the right patterns of sent sentences and structures okay so this is the little introduction of structural approach students now we are learning ahead popularized by tamil nadu and from state in the 60s central institute institute of english hyderabad and popularized it so these were the state students who popularized uh, which popularized and made it famous uh, what we are talking about structural approach okay so what is a structure first of all let's learn about it what is structure so structure may be defined as the tool of language this is the tool of language that we are using to use it 
we are not comfortable in using the tool of language when we are actually not confident so structure is teaching you to be more confident and it is giving you some sort of uh, self confidence what should i say to to use the term language with your comfort level so language tool includes sound these are all the uh, vocabularies these are all the terms which i'm giving you these are called language tool so remember sound stress rhythm intonation vocabulary structures and pronunciation articulation these are the terms which are the uh, considered which are considered as tool of language so just imagine students if these all terms are away from our language if we uh, just make it apart from that so uh, will it be possible to learn the english language or any other language of course not so these are the terms which very very necessary which we are which i'm talking about sound stress rhythm intonation vocabulary structures pronunciation articulation so this is preparing something very beautiful and it is coming out with the structures also so structures should not be confused with sentences don't get it in the same way these are not the synonyms sentence is different and structure is different so sentence is a grammatical order of words i am going to tell you so this is a gra grammatical order of words that i am using um, subject plus verb plus object these are the grammatical order but structures need not have any grammatical background it is not necessary that when we are preparing the structures and when we are teaching our students with the help of structures so it is not necessary they are following some grammatical background a solid grammatical background so understand like good morning thank you etc and also the structures with what we communicate when you wish me when i enter in the class good morning ma'am so this is not the uh, proper sentence what you are following but you are also making it a structure uh, but you are giving it a uh, giving it a very good meaning beautiful meaning so understand it in that way okay so important thing to remember about structure that it is defined as a tool of language number 1 number 2 to tool when we are talking about tools so it includes sound stress rhythm intonation vocabulary structures pronunciation articulation uh, in the tool itself and they don't get confused sentences with structure structures are different sentences are different what are sentences sentences are grammatical order of words and structures are something that you give proper meaning but it is not necessarily that you are following some grammatical background behind that okay students i hope you are understanding yes ma'am yes ma'am thank you for your feedback so sentence patterns are those structures those structures in which words are used in a pattern comprising grammatically correct sentences now see sentence patterns sentence pattern is itself a structure and in which words are used in a pattern comprising grammatically correct sentences for example it is given in my on my screen pradanya is a beautiful girl this is a simple sentence that pradanya is a beautiful girl but next sentence pattern is giving something different pattern like is pradanya a beautiful girl now it is not a simple sentence it is in a question form so grammatically correct and following a different pattern these are the structures then a beautiful girl is pradanya so this is something that i'm telling in a very uh, assertive way that beautiful girl is pradanya so same vocabulary items same vocabulary is uh, there are some uh, items like pradanya is a beautiful girl these are all words uh, actually used in different manner 
so but all the sentences give different meanings due to the different arrangements of these vocabulary items so are you understanding students yes, so yes. this is something that one one sentence pattern is giving different to each other so next now let's discuss about types of structure i have told you this is a pattern so let's discuss about types of structure now there are four types of structures mainly sentence structures phrase structures idiomatic structures routine structures there are four sentence phrase idiomatic and routine structures so let's study them one by one Now sentence structure, students. The important part of a sentence. What what is sentence structure? So the important part of a sentence, subject and predicate occupy a fixed place. If they change the meaning, also changes. So that is the sentence structure. I told you that there are some fixed set of words which is which is used in a particular sentence. if it is changed if it is exchanged somehow the sequence is exchanged order is exchanged then there would be a different sentence so rohan gave a pen to priya priya gave a pen to rohan now the difference is there in earlier sentence rohan was giving pen to priya but in second sentence priya was giving pen to rohan same vocabulary is used but by replacing the word order that is subject object position okay so the meaning is changing so this is sentence structure so while writing a sentence we use following structures like subject plus verb we can see subject plus verb birds fly so this is something that we are using in sentence structure and then subject plus verb plus observe it is a table then subject plus verb plus uh, that is uh, complementary that is uh, the sun is bright then subject plus verb plus indirect object the direct object is also there the teacher gave us notes so this is something that we are following in a structure that all of you have studied in your previous classes also then subject plus verb plus to infinitive that she wants to learn so this is something that we are changing the structure then subject plus verb plus jiran he begins crying so understand students are we are reading we are studying the types of structures and in this first um, type which i am telling you that is a sentence structure in sentence structure it is important to understand that subject and pre predicate occupy a fixed place but if we want to change their meaning they change their place okay understood now yes, next is about phrase structure phrase is something it is called that group of words that gives meaning even without it being a sentence we are not framing a full sentence upon it and we are using some group of words only and it is giving a beautiful meaning if i tell you okay have you understood students this is a full sentence if i ask only understood even you understand that ma'am is asking if we have understood or not so the pretty flower i am not making full sentence the flower is pretty but i am giving a phrase or i am giving a structure that is called a phrase pretty flower or the young boy so these are something that follows the structure of phrases and this order cannot be changed pretty flower will be pretty flower it cannot be flower pretty young boy young boy uh, will be same boy young cannot be there so phrase structure is always there where you cannot change their order in sentence structure you can change or replace object or verb to get a different structure to get a different meaning from the same vocabulary okay so this is phrase structure now let next let's see the third part that is idiomatic structure so students these structures or idiomatic structure contain their own specific meanings 
idiomatic need not have grammatical units they are so composed that if we split them they lose their meaning it is something that we are actually not going to break them if we are going to break them we are going to split them they will be actually losing their meaning you will not have a good uh, word like see in vain in vain is we are understanding that everything is spoiled whatever is done till now then we use this idiom all of the sudden just remove one word of the sudden will be okay no all of the will be okay no you cannot split it you have to speak like all sudden no it is incorrect then in black and white it has certain meaning what it is in black and white red handed caught red handed so these are some idiom structure which are not having grammatical units itself and they are so composed that if we split them they lose their meaning so this is about idiomatic structure that they have all they contain their own specific meaning now we have understood about sentence structure phrase structure idiomatic structure now let's understand about routine structure so what is the word routine routine which we follow okay which we follow every day or it is in routine so this is the meaning of that word so routine structure consists of such group of words which are used by us in a day to take conversation or on certain occasion proper word order is maintained what we are using every day okay good morning students can you see my presentation these are some routine structures so have you understood so everyone do your homework in your notebook so this this is something is called in routine structure so this was all about types of structure students now structural approach we are understanding about characteristics there are so many characteristics of structural approach and there are 275 just remember it 275 structures from the core of essential english which students at secondary school stage must know structures are based on word order some word orders are actually followed and prepared in the form of structures and these structures can be of sentence structures idiomatic phrase or routine structures and every structure expresses an important side of grammar and need not to follow the full grammar i told you in the beginning that we are not supposed to follow the full grammar part in that but somewhere it is there important side of grammar is there that we are using in that the structures are carefully graded to give a clear picture of the form and meaning only meaning of one word is taught at a time so understand this thing very carefully the structures are very carefully graded to give a clear picture what you want to convey to your students what you want to convey to your classmates what you want to convey to your teachers it should uh, have the clear form and clear meaning there should not be any ambiguity and only meaning of one word is taught at a time to as a directive and then as a part of infinitive to go to post to write etc these are also the structures which we are using now students uh, we are going to discuss about aims of structural approach what what is the objective and aim of structural approach why we are using it in the classrooms so now understand it that first of all it is very important to lay the foundation of english language by establishing drill and repetition of 275 structures of the english language to enable the learners to attain the mastery of over an essential vocabulary of 3000 root words students must know actually 3000 root words when they are understanding the structures of english language and then third is very important to correlate the teaching of grammar and composition with the reading the more you read more you get to know about your structures so it is correlating something grammar and composition 
then to teach the four fundamental skills which are definitely we all know about it lsrw listening speaking reading and writing in the order name so first of all listening is uh, there then speaking is there then reading is there then writing is there so this is structural approach is following to enhance these following these uh, four structure uh, fundamental skills then another aim is to lay emphasis on oral oral and oral approach and the condemnation of formal grammar for its own sake see students when we are learning english language it is not necessarily uh, required that uh, we are using fundamental or uh, very traditional grammar style when we are speaking so structural approach actually giving us the idea that to convey your meaning convey your full form of meaning when it is required in proper structures and according to the situations we have read it in the situational approach now we are going to study about principles of structural approach how those principles are actually uh, seen are why it is so important that to see the principles of structural approach now first of all students i want to tell you that whenever we are looking at the principles of something approach or concept or anything that means we are understanding how this concept or the thing or the content works how it is uh, giving it orientation to others how it is working in a functional way so principle is something that is underlying its basis for learning english language okay so we are going to understand the principles one by one so first of all students we have principle of importance of framing language habits i have always been telling you students that until unless you don't find yourself to be competent enough in lsrw skills which are listening speaking reading and writing we cannot say that i am well versed with english language or you can you cannot say that you you are learning well or i cannot say if i don't use uh, uh, english language while teaching so i cannot say i am a good english teacher so this is all about framing language habit and structural approach lays a stress on the importance of forming ha language habit you should be in the habit of using english language particularly the habit of forming words in english whatever you are using whatever you are speaking whatever you are speaking you are actually framing english language importance of speech the second is the second important part is importance of speech so first of all you have to develop language habit and the second part is importance of speech speech is something that you are giving in spoken form so students it is very important to understand the structural approach is based on the principles of effective use of speech when i am using some instructions to you study well prepare well for your exams so i am giving you some structures in speech form so fg french professor fg french has given all these uh, uh, principles and it is very important to understand them that firstly it is important to uh, frame the language habit secondly it is important to have a sp particular speech sounds when you are using structures then thirdly students it is important for people's activity so whatever the students are actually doing in the classroom they are actually supposed to learn english language through lsrw skills so so the structural approach is based on the principles of pupils activity also the importance of pupils activity 
rather than the activity of the teacher is the sure way to learn english definitely i'm i'm teaching you english language how it is to be taught and i'm teaching you how it is to be taught but when you will be going in your classrooms and when you will be teaching to your students then you will come to know that your activity your all actions reactions are based upon the objective of making your students more competent in uh, english language which is a foreign language so first principle you have understood it is used for framing language habits secondly it is important for speech it is important thirdly it is important for pupils activity then fourth is the principle of oral work yes it is giving more importance to oral work which we are speaking oral work is the sheet anchor of the structural approach sheet anchor is something that you should know that okay fine writing is important but until unless you are not speaking a language you cannot say that you have you have learned the english language so work oral work is the basis and all the rest are built up from it each language has its own grammar next fifth uh, fifth principle so i'm discussing about uh, it each language has its own grammar see hindi language has its own grammar french german sanskrit in the same way english language is also having its own grammar and instead of teaching grammar of the target language target language that is of course if we are teaching english that target language is english language and its structures are to be taught each language has its own grammar in this way now students we have learned about the principles of structural approach now it is very important for all of us to know about selection of structures what is the selection of structures and how it works so how should a teacher select the structure to teach the learner this involves the selection of structures why and how in the classroom i'm using that so in the structural approach students it is mainly focus on the structures what kind of structures that is actually based upon your selection process but some principles must be kept in your mind while selecting the structures so number 1 which we are going to discuss that is usefulness what is the usefulness usefulness is something that whatever we are using in words or in sentences that is actually useful and it is more frequently used and you should introduce those words first and those structures first as the teacher goes in the classroom and the, the class is suppose very very noisy and students are just standing and they are just playing and throwing the things here and there and then there is the need of a structure that teacher will speak up definitely the teacher will tell the student sit down and open up your books this is the natural uh, structure which will come out from a teacher's mouth isn't it students are you understanding yes ma'am okay so this is something that the teacher is going to do so you usefulness is there but suppose if the, on the contrary if the class is very noisy and students are just out of control in discipline and the teacher is going in the class and teacher is instructing them okay open up your uh, page number this then do you think this structure is useful this ordering structure is useful no first of all the teacher has to make the students discipline first sit down is the utility structure okay so this is about usefulness we are whatever you are speaking whatever the structure you are using is it useful is, uh, does it have does it uh, have its utility or not so we have to ponder upon that we have to think upon that in a very nice way so that's why students it is called the teaching activity is pre planned you have to be very very careful when you are in your classroom what you are saying what you are um, ignoring what you are uh, instructing 
so these are something that you are uh, keeping it in your mind some st kinds of structures if my students are going to do this i'm going to do this if I'm, my students are reacting in this way i'm going to react in this way so this is something the teacher is planning beforehand now next a uh, point which must be kept in mind when we are selecting the structures to teach the english language that is productivity yes students some if the structures are productive other structures can be built upon we have two sentence pattern here mr roy is here here is mr roy there is difference in speaking productivity is there productivity is something there when you are creating very useful when you are creating some structures that are expressions are built upon so if i say okay my student samiksha is here and if i say here is miss samiksha so that is something makes a difference although the meaning is same but i am more productive when i say here is miss samiksha so that means i am giving importance to my student by by uh, just using this uh, structure so this is the way actually language is taught to students so the formal pattern is productive because we can frame many sentences on the same pattern he is there so productive is something when you are giving one sentence to your students and students are making many more sentences i'm going to mumbai and now you can use this sentence in your own words as as per your choice of destination maybe you are saying ma'am i'm going to delhi ma'am i'm going to jaipur ma'am i'm going to lucknow so there are there are different sentences which can be pr product from from one sentence so but here is mr roy is something you cannot uh, uh, repeatedly use so productivity of sentence structure is very very important so we have discussed about two points first is usefulness of the structures the, when we are selecting the structures and then secondly productivity is should be there students actually must learn from you that okay mom has used this or son has used this structure now what about next structure we are going to build upon many other sentences now next point which you must keep in your mind students that is simplicity simplicity is something depends upon the form and meaning of the sentence so this should be in your mind that you are not going to actually inculcate uh, uh, so many difficult words or very uh, typical words in your speech which are not easily understandable keep it simple so that your students are motivated to understand the english language and not only motivated to understand but also to apply it in their routine structures also so it is actually very much the impact of the student and very much impact of the teachers that if the teacher is using simple sentences which are actually hitting the mind of students and the students are feeling comfortable okay ma'am is using such simple sentences i, I can also answer in the class so this is actually building their confidence so use the structure wisely when something has to be taught in a simpler way don't go for the hardest one now next point you should keep in your mind while selecting the structures that teachability teachability is something that applies to a teacher items easy from teaching point of view something you are teaching to your students and it is actually not giving proper meaning and you are not uh, actually able to teach that in a in that way which is required so teach ability is very necessary you are using the structure okay fine you are using the gerund sentences but you yourself are not well versed with the gerund concept then how can you teach that structure grammar is actually surely not a solid part of structural approach but it is not fully rejected 
okay are you understanding students so this is something you must keep it in your mind now next morning students that is frequency so what is frequency frequency when the structures must be selected with a high frequency of occurrence you have chosen a sentence structure and you are telling your students to use it repeatedly this is called frequency but if you are telling if you are not telling your students that uh, particular uh, structure to be repeated by them then it is losing its frequency so if you are teaching a proper structure then students must repeat it frequency must be increased frequency is something when you are using the structures again and again and again and again without any disturbance so again i am connecting the previous uh, thought point that productivity is must in this work case when you are teaching any structure then will it be applied to any other situation any other concept that you must uh, keep it in mind when you are teaching when you are using the structures in the classroom if you are negatively approaching your students for example if you are telling your uh, students who have done the assignment if you are telling them this is uh, useless so fine the teacher is expressing teacher is giving feedback but uh, remember students this type of structure is actually not appreciated so something is there which should be frequently occurred so it should be remembered then next point which is very important while we are selecting the structure is range range is something the thing is going from this side to this side so how long it is persisting to know in how many context it is applicable if i am using a structure i must know that in how many context it will be applicable by the students students need to apply the knowledge which the teacher has delivered so the range is increasing when the students are learning but if you yourself have chosen the structure which is not increasing the range that means you are somewhere faulty in choosing the structures maybe you have chosen the difficult words very very difficult words to understand or maybe you have chosen the wrong structure in wrong situation so this matters a lot then next point which is again very important that is coverage a word covering a number of meanings for example meals so there are many words which have number of meanings itself so you must know what type of structure you are using in your classroom that it is covering that particular meaning in that particular situation so this is something you must know then learnability we had talked about teachability now it is learnability the learnability is teacher should focus on the items that are easy for students to learn should be taken first definitely if i am talking about structures in what way i am going to teach to my students so first of all i am definitely going to pick up those topics first in my classrooms which are easy and if i'm following this easy to hard concept which is the basic concept of our teach principles of teaching then the students learning is actually more effective so learnability is also something that you are using the structures you have selected particular structures to teach but your students are not actually up to that mark or maybe your students need more practice of it only then you can proceed further so this was to be taken in care now students we have seen principles and we have uh, selection of gradation process so this is something we have seen about structural approach now let's see the advantages of structural approach which facilitates um, the structural approach and now let's understand them one by one so advantages we are talking about of structural approach so first of all it facilitates the learning of english language by imparting the knowledge of its structures so how the sentence is framed 
in what way sentence structure where the words are just shuffled from here and there to give different different meanings or phrase structures idiom structures or the routine structures so whatever we are using whatever type of structure we are using it is giving us the benefit of learning the english language then secondly it focuses on sentence pattern and a lot of practice learns the language before read or write it so when you are reading or writing you are learning that language beforehand when you are understanding what your teacher is telling you when see small students are very smart they follow their teachers very rigid way so this is something that they learn that okay we should not speak this we should we should not speak like this and we must do a lot of practice to speak in a different or correct way so number one advantage is it it is imparting the knowledge of structures and then secondly it is focusing on sentence patterns what sentence patterns we are choosing every day then by learning the structures of sentences the learner automatically learns some grammar it is like students teaching the grammar in indirect way when i am teaching you one uh, concept like preposition in grammar and then the, i'm going to tell you about what is preposition types of preposition then i'm going to give you some drill exercises that okay preposition on in among between and etc so many prepositions are there so, so how the prepositions are used i'm going to be focused on those particular sentences which are having the uses of preposition but the structural approach teaches this in indirect way it means there is in the mind of students the see students as if um, the male and female in hindi language they speak differently main khata hu this is spoken by a male it is assumed or not main khata hu is a that uh, does a girl speak does a girl speak like that no no and the girl speaks main khati hu so this is indirect training nobody has taught but the, it is like following automatically so how the words are ordered how the words are used how the sentence is framed how the phrases are framed so the common errors can be avoided during uh, the speech time in grammar and composition so this is a wonderful uh, way to teach english language and or to uh, um, has an interest among the students so it also enables learner to speak the language fast and which is very important if we are okay fine we are good in listening english language we are good in reading that we are good in writing that but structural approach gives you more opportunity gives your students more opportunity to learn to speak the language first and this is the main objective of this target language if you are not uh, competent enough to speak in english language so we cannot assume ourselves as well as our students that they are learning a foreign language in a very nice way and they are well versed with it so this is the biggest advantage of it then next advantage which i am always uh, telling you that it teaches all four skills listening speaking reading and writing these are based on and scientific principles structures are based on scientific principles at every stage the objective is clearly defined the students are actually very much confirmed what they have to speak and teacher is also confirmed what i have to speak if i'm asking a question definitely my tone would be in that way if i'm declaring some sentence or declaring something then it would be in a declarative form assertive form exclamatory form in any form so there are some scientific principles which the students are also learning hand to hand then habit of speaking english is developed right from the beginning if small structures of phrase or idioms are also used basically phrases are used uh, more than the idioms so if it uh, you just see the impact 
of using the phrases more in your language it it develops your habit to use the english language in spoken form more and more and the biggest advantage for indian students that this type of drilling helps in removing the hesitation among the students there are many students who are confident enough in english language and they can write well they can listen well they can read number of good books but they hesitate in speaking so this type of structural approach when the teacher uses in the class i told you in the direct method that only only target language is used but in this we are not strictly following that rule we are not following uh, strictly because we are using sometimes uh, our mother tongue or maybe regional uh, language in most cases when we are using phrases okay set down a pet job so th the uh, language is going directly into the ears of the mind of the ears and mind of the students so this is removing hesitation now then the child is actually prompted to speak also okay now answer me and repeatedly if this is uh, done in the classroom by the teacher then definitely students are going to learn without hesitation of course students there are some limitations also first of all it does not solve the problem of teaching english it only helps the teacher to know what he or she has taught and what he should teach next i have taught this much and now i'm going to next part this. but problems of teaching is something different there are many problems like uh, pronunciation problem is there how how will i deal with that this uh, structural approach is not suggesting me that then secondly does not consider the capacity of learner and expect a great deal from the teacher and somewhere this is the limitation that even i must agree to that that um, it is expecting more from a teacher to use structure uh, with so many um, highly selected procedure that to use this and you do not use that but Well, what about the capacity of a learner? That the learner is learning or not, and in what way? If it is, if the the teacher's efforts are in vain, then what next? It is not giving the answer of that. Then third point, third limitation is does not guide the teacher how to present the content, and also no guidelines for written exercises. How I am going to give the exercises to my students in written form? Okay, I have asked. I have. orally i have done so much but no guidelines for written exercises then definitely i have to move to some other source other uh, method approach for this so this is the biggest limitation of this method then the next the center of interest is is the content not the learner Uh, according to this limitation continuous teaching of structures and drilling makes the class mechanical and dull suitable for junior classes only and at the higher classes students want to learn the content also not all the time drilling is uh, appreciated so arin ghosh is also saying this that this approach neglects what it neglects reading of all types vocabulary exp expansion exploitation of people's knowledge of mother tongue and any possibilities of more flexible structure grading grading is very very tough that how you are going to grade the particular structure and production of interesting reading materials so these are some limitations students we cannot avoid also in indian schools we have problems of overcrowded classrooms and rigid curriculum the teacher has to complete the syllabus in time and there are so many students in the classroom uh, where it is not possible to teach them the structure one by one or uh, all the four types of structures which we have discussed earlier uh, so it is not actually practically possible for a teacher when uh, he or she teaches uh, uh, under the pressure of completing the syllabus also we have devices like prose poetry grammar and composition and the teacher uh, has to go according again it also 
demands a great deal of dedication from the teachers and many teachers don't have proper training to apply these kind of approaches yes it is true in the sense of indian classrooms also we have a lot of problems related to defective pronunciation defective knowledge of english language and how the approaches and methods are being used by the teachers who are themselves not well trained so these are something limitations that we cannot avoid but it has still its uh, advantages which we have discussed now these are some references uh, students which you must know um when uh, which you, uh, you can go through while reading more about uh, the content then uh, students next is there are some mcqs so let's discuss about them in a general way so teaching and learning is a journey from it is from concrete to abstract simple to complex known to unknown and uh, the answer covers it so all of the above the method of teaching english adopted at present in school curriculum is related to functional communicative approach fca is in opposition to structural approach now the communicative language teaching replaced by, basically by the structural teaching structures are being taught so it is not in natural language processing situational language teaching motivational teaching it is from structural teaching and now uh, direct method is also known as natural method it is also called natural method with which the english is uh, spoken as a target language and only english is used then grammar translation method stresses on accuracy now it is stressing more on accuracy rather than any other skill which are given to you fluency appropriateness listening skill these are also very important but more stress when we are talking about so accuracy is more important in grammar translation method we also call it gtm then grammar translation method is basically used to teach classical language so it is used to teach classical language and the next objective of direct method is to develop a command over the target language grammar translation does uh, method does not enhance a student's communicative skill and traditional method goes against the uh, press, goes against the pedagogic principles so students these are actually the sort of uh, present the sort of presentation given by me on the structural approach and we have discussed lot about uh, how the structural approach is working what are its characteristics we have seen the types of structures we have seen uh, the characteristics of uh, structural approach and how it is working we have seen beautiful principles of uh, structural approach and we have seen advantages and limitation and then we have seen what should be the uh, selection process of uh, selecting the structures so this is all about today's class and i hope you have understood well and you have uh, got the knowledge about structural approach yes.